Did you know that this product, which looks like plywood, is actually oriented strand board or OSB? And OSB is just as strong as plywood, less expensive, and environmentally friendly. Well, today we're going to go to Portland, Oregon, to Louisiana Pacific's Material Technology Center and learn how OSB is made. This OSB factory is actually a scaled-down model of what you'll find at the larger manufacturing sites. And there's a reason for that. This factory is also a laboratory where they test OSB for strength and durability. And they also develop new products that are made out of OSB, but certainly don't look like it. The first step in making oriented strand board is to feed a log into a machine they call a waferizer. Warren Easley is Louisiana Pacific's Vice President of Technology. So Warren, OSB or oriented strand board is actually made from small pieces of wood like this. That's right, Steve. Actually, these, you can think of these uh, strands as the fundamental building block of the product. We actually cut these on the machine that you just saw. They're typically uh, 20 thousandths of an inch thick, uh, four inches long and about an inch and a half wide, typically to two inches uh, wide. And we lay these up in a mat and we orient those uh, in the machine direction and alternately in the cross direction to build strength in a process that we're going to show you in a, in a few moments. And actually, the key to this process is that we're able to, to run with very small logs. Uh, typically, in a plywood process, it takes large logs. They're chucked up. And actually, the veneer is peeled from the wood, so it takes a large diameter log. With the oriented strand board process, we actually start with very small logs that grow very quickly. This happens to be southern yellow pine, which we grow in the southern part of the United States. The wood wafers are loaded into a giant blending machine that operates a lot like a large clothes dryer. As the blender tumbles, a polyurethane resin or glue is applied to the wafers. Uh, Steve, this is the uh, spinner head, and this device actually uh, applies the resin uh, to the wafers in this process. And the way this works is this, what we call a, uh, a spin head, fits up into this device. The resin is uh, pumped into uh, this cone. It is then uh, uh, sprayed out through these uh, orifices. And uh, this thing is rotating at about 14,000 RPM. While the drum is spinning. That's right. So you get a very fine mist uh, of the resin so that the uh, resin is applied uh, very, very uniformly. So the resin then is the actual glue that bonds these fibers together that make the board. That's the correct. The wafers together that That's makes correct. the board. The resin-coated wafers are loaded into a square form for pressing. In a larger plant, this is all done by machine. Warren, I am really amazed. This doesn't feel sticky at all. There's, it doesn't seem like there's any resin here. Can you tell me why? Yeah, sure, Steve. Actually, uh, this is a phenolic resin, so it's transparent. And we only put it on at about 2.5%. Uh, that means that if we had 100 pounds of wafers here, we'd only have 2.5 pounds of actual resin. But that's plenty of resin to do the job. And this is, the resin is actually evenly coated across this wafer. Now what we're going to do next, we're going to remove this form and we're going to take this thick mat and we're going to put it in this press over here where we apply pressure and temperature. And we're actually going to get that resin, once the board, uh, the thickness of the board is formed, get that resin to react and cross-linked and actually bond these wafers together very, very strongly. The wafers are pressed at 450 pounds per square inch and temperatures up to 420 degrees for two minutes. The computer keeps track of everything, including the amount of moisture in the board. This is incredible, Warren, uh, that we took this big pile of wood wafers and compressed it into this solid board. It's really solid. Tell me a little bit about what happens to this board now. Right. Well, this comes off the press. As you can see, the, uh, the adhesion is excellent. It's a very smooth surface. Uh, the, the edges are rough here, but these get trimmed off automatically in our manufacturing process. Of course, this is just a test board. And that uh, excess trim gets recycled back into the process. So we don't waste anything here. Inside the laboratory, the OSB is run through a battery of tests to determine how well it will hold up to time and the elements. This siding may look like plank wood, but it's actually OSB. Warren, this is an OSB piece of siding here. It looks like real wood. Yeah, that's right. Actually, uh, this is uh, an OSB substrate, but it's been highly engineered for this exterior use. 
Uh, we have um, put additional resin in to make the, uh, the board more water resistant. We have a metabolic inhibitor that actually will kill mildew and rot and so forth and uh, not allow the uh, material to degrade in any way. We've also embossed a very wood-like uh, pattern on it, as you can see. And this, what it, this is what the product looks like when, it, when it's installed. It's very attractive, a uh, very easy product to install. The builders like to work with this. It cuts like wood and goes up like wood. Warren, I know that attics can get up to 140 degrees. This is an OSB roof decking product. Explain to me how this is going to help reduce people's cooling bill. Right, this is our Tech Shield Radiant Barrier product. And basically what we're doing here is laminating a specially engineered uh, aluminized uh, uh, foil uh, to the OSB. And what this does, this is installed, installed with a shiny sound side down, if you will, uh, and prevents the heat that the uh, roof is accumulating from re-radiating into the attic. And these engineers are coming up with dozens of new ways to make oriented strand board look and feel just like solid wood.